Hi, this is Melissa from Blockchain WTF, and today we're going to be talking about how the blockchain is affecting agriculture. I'm sure most of us have bought an organic apple and wondered, is this actually organic, or did they just put a sticker on it and charge more? Currently, we just have to trust that our food is what the label claims it is, and it's where it came from. But we don't actually know. Some of us know more than others the advertising gimmicks that food companies use, like labeling something as a cheese product, even though it's not actually cheese. Check this out. This is Kraft American Cheese. I'm going to show you what happens when you burn Kraft American Cheese. It's supposed to melt like every other cheese, right? Listen to that. This is plastic. This is ridiculous. Lab-grown meat is on the rise with no clear agreement on how it's going to be disclosed to consumers. It could potentially be called cultured meat, cell-based meat, or clean meat. All resulting from actual animal cells grown in a lab, which provides a lot of ethical confusion for consumers. Consumers have found body parts and animal limbs in their food. Salmonella has gotten people sick. Who's responsible? The USDA, the farmer, the guy who put the items on the truck? The blockchain will help reduce these by adding transparency and trust to the supply chain by tracking the journey of your food from farm to factory to table with checkpoints of accountability along the way. For this to make sense, let's take a look at Monsanto. Even if you don't know the history of the company, you probably know, yeah, we don't like them, right? They control most of our food. <laughs> most people actually consider them the most evil corporation of all time. <laughs> Inferior human organs. Very brief history because their horrifying resume is quite extensive. Monsanto was originally founded as a chemical company in 1901 to produce saccharin, an artificial sweetener 300 times sweeter than sugar with no nutritional value. They were involved in PCB production for 50 years, the two atomic bombs that were dropped on Japan, development of Agent Orange which caused generational birth defects, and then they got into the agriculture business after all of that by developing pesticides. Then in the 80s, they were the first to genetically modify plants. Monsanto's seeds that they sell contain a Monsanto-owned patent and their genes so that Monsanto dictates who can plant their seeds or can't and has sued farmers for using their seeds when farmers never willingly did. The Monsanto seeds flew onto their soil, <laughs> as pollination happens that way. These seeds destroyed the organic farmer's crops because they weren't using Roundup, another Monsanto product used to kill weeds around the plants. And then in addition to the financial stress of their crops being ruined, they were now sued by Monsanto. So now you have a little context, you probably want to avoid any products of Monsanto's and only support the struggling organic farmers, right? Well, how would you actually know? <laughs> Sounds like these guys have their hands in each aspect of the food and chemical industry. Well, once the blockchain is applied to agriculture, smart contract checkpoints along the supply chain could theoretically track which farms use Roundup and use their GMO seeds, and then you can shop at places that do not. Except for farmers that don't know seeds flew onto their property lines. A helpful change with the blockchain would be reducing food waste when a foodborne illness breaks out. Currently, stores throw away more items than necessary to stop it from spreading, because identifying the contaminated items is really difficult under the current systems. Pinpointing the contamination is difficult without the blockchain, so to be safe, they throw away all the food from that shipment. In 2018, a deadly E. coli outbreak connected to romaine lettuce, grown in Arizona, affected 35 states across the U.S. In Europe in 2013, products were advertised as beef, but were actually horse. The government in Kerala and in southern India is already implementing the blockchain into their grocery distribution. This increase in consumer confidence comes from knowing what the animal was fed and what antibiotics they were or were not giving. Animals currently are pumped with antibiotics to help livestock grow faster and increase revenue, and also to prevent the animals from getting sick because many of them live in unclean conditions. Allowing consumers to choose whether or not they want to pay for meat without antibiotics will give farmers an accurate insight as to the supply and demand for cruelty food and if that claim can be verified. Food will also need less preservatives if it can reach the store faster because there are checkpoints along the way. Pavocoin is a marketplace and crypto coin that helps farmers compete with larger corporations, helping farmers shift from price takers to price setters, forcing downstream cost reductions along the way. Pavacoin can be used by consumers to directly buy from farmers or can be used by farmers to pre-sell their crops. 
Farmers in Stockton and Dixon, California are already using the system. These systems will be able to help reduce food waste as they will be able to more accurately gauge demand and adjust supply as needed. In 2015, Australian startup Agric Digital provided a platform to farmers for contracts, deliveries, and payments. It allows cloud-based commodity management for traders. The release of the Agro Digital platform in the US and Canada is set for early 2019. BlockGrain is another startup from Australia that is working on integrated blockchain grain storage, contracts, and delivery. CottonCoin is a decentralized global proof-of-stake cryptocurrency to help renovate the cotton industry. Many of the countries we receive cotton products from are third world countries with little trust or digitization. There's so much corruption in the industry that the International Food Policy Research Institute estimated that 300,000 Indian farmers have killed themselves from financial despair since the 1900s. Monsanto has a connection to this too, in India and China with a documentary called Bitter Seeds Addressing the Issue. Monsanto's experts counter these claims and argue that suicides have decreased since increasing production and income for these farmers. Little access to institutional credit to compete with larger firms also contribute to the problem. CottonCoin aims to hold each participant in the supply chain of the manufacturing and delivery of cotton to a higher standard. Consumers can use the token to order a cotton analysis service and rate supply chain companies to remove bad actors and increase the negotiation and logistics of distribution. Know of any other platforms or issues with the industry? Throw them down in the comments. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, along with the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching.